Hello, everyone. How are you? Um, welcome to our next talk. Today, um, it's my pleasure to introduce our next speech speaker, Ben Zweig here, CEO of Revelio Labs. Um, he's got an amazing talk for you, and I'm going to let him do all the introductions. I'm going to hand it over to you, Ben. Thanks, Spencer. Appreciate it. Um, all right. So uh, nice to nice to see everyone. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen, and we'll kick off. Sound good? Okay. There we go. All right. So um, when it comes to small teams, like early stage startups or, or sports teams, um, let me actually just, uh, yeah. So no, something's not working. Oh yeah. So, um, or yeah, when it comes to small teams, like early stage startups or sports teams, we really care quite a lot about talent. We want to know the history of each person, uh, their strengths, weaknesses, and skills, uh, really to understand if this team will succeed. But when it comes to big teams like companies, uh, we really only tend to look at financial metrics, which are just indicators of performance. We don't look under the hood to understand the inner workings of companies. In order to really get to know a company, you need to look at the talent that it's made of. Now, there's a good reason why this hasn't been done. It's really difficult to understand talent on a large scale. Every company has an entirely different way of understanding their workforce. They have different titles, different seniority levels, and different skill classifications. And they don't share this information with anyone. This makes a company's talent hard to analyze and impossible to compare with competitors. At Revelio Labs, we're creating the technology to understand the workforce of companies. By tapping into the universe of public employment data, we can actually see more about the workforce of companies than companies see about their own workforce. Through a series of AI technologies, we've actually recreated the job language. Instead of using each company's obscure terminology, through deep natural language processing techniques, we've created a universal taxonomy to understand occupations, seniority levels, and skills. And we've applied that standard structure to all companies. This allows us to not only understand the workforce of each company, but it also allows us to compare that workforce to competitors. Today, we've got customers across multiple industries. Investment analysts, for example, use Rebellio to evaluate companies. Uh, one hedge fund that we're working with uh, is tracking where salespeople are leaving to know which companies are not hitting their targets. Uh, we're working with a private equity firm that's, uh, that's investing in companies that are winning the war for talent in key strategic initiatives. And a large asset manager that's tracking salaries to predict cash flow. And that's really just the beginning. We've since moved beyond evaluating companies to helping companies solve their actual problems. Uh, for example, we can we can identify where a workforce is at risk of automation and tell you the employees that can be retrained. Uh, we can identify where uh, competitors are offshoring their talent and where and where teams can relocate uh, to compete. And so as competition accelerates in the future of work, analysis of talent is going to become more and more critical. We really tend to think of financial metrics as the foundation of understanding companies. But these, again, are really just indicators of performance. They tell us the output of a complex machine, but they don't tell us how the machine works, how to replicate it, or how to make it uh, more efficient. Uh, finally, with Revelio Labs, you can look under the hood to see how a company works from the inside. We really believe that talent is the next most exciting frontier to understanding companies, and we are proudly building the tools to finally understand it. Thank you so much. Uh, that was, you know, try to keep it brief because, um, you know, happy to take any any questions. Thanks. Much Ben. Um, for everyone that's here, you can uh, ask some questions in the chat uh, located to the right if you haven't seen it already. Uh, if not, we'll give you some time to mingle, and you can also uh, go and check some of the digital booths out. 
as well on the platform. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Yeah, sure. So I'll I'll uh, I'll wait for some questions in the chat, but in the meantime, I'll I'll um I'll share I'll share something. We've got um I mean one one kind of benefit of uh, of analyzing this type of data is that we can see quite a lot about um, interesting trends in the workforce. Um, so so I'll share a, a newsletter that we send around weekly um, about what we can see. Uh, it's sort of just interesting tidbits that we can see. And Jennifer, great, great question about will this integrate into an HRIS system? Yeah. So, so really, I think one of the one of the key uh, one of the key problems here, in, and I'll stop screen sharing, is you know I, I used to analyze workforce data at IBM for many years, and um, and we would analyze HRIS data, but we would have no clue of what was going on with competitors like Accenture, or Microsoft, or anything else. So so with this universal taxonomy. We can we can integrate um, HR data to a common standard, so that way we can we can um, you know take an HRIS system from some company, integrate it integrate it with public data. So yes, we can integrate to an HRIS system and integrate other companies' data to the same standard, so that you can make sure to make Apple to Apple comparisons. And certainly happy to. Happy to chat offline if, if you think it sounds interesting. Cool. Since, since uh, I guess some questions might still be rolling in, I'll uh, I'll highlight a couple of um, a couple of interesting use cases that we've done recently. I think actually the initial proposed topic of this talk. Uh, you're welcome. Was uh, was around uh, automation. So we we did a collaboration with a with a team at MIT uh, around uh, assessing the the um, the vulnerability of certain roles for automation. Um, so uh, so the the benefit there is that we can do competitive benchmarking and we can see, for example, we did a project with AXA, the insurance company, and we said, you know, how vulnerable is AXA to automation relative to, you know. MetLife or Allion or anything like that. Uh, has this led to published data? Yes, we've published um, a bunch of uh, a bunch of articles. Uh, we have a lot of white papers. We have academic papers um, that that use this. Um, so, so Charles, you, you can um, if if you, if you want to reach out, I can I can send you a bunch of those a uh, bunch of those sources. We actually just finished a project with uh, Barclays Equity Research. Um, where you know using uh, human capital data to predict financial returns, and found some really interesting results. Um, cool. So, um, so again, you know, I'd, uh, I'd yeah. Let me let me give you um, uh, the email address: info at reveliolabs.com. And uh, and also um, and also check out the newsletter, the the blog, and uh, we we send weekly weekly newsletters. So subscribe to that; they're usually pretty interesting. Actually, in this past week, just this morning, we sent out a newsletter which showed um, that uh, salaries in job postings have been falling quite a lot. Actually, a really surprising amount. So um, so we think that's a really worrisome trend. We're kind of worried about wage deflation. So that that's more more of a macro analysis. Um, it's a little rare for us, but interesting nonetheless. Thank you so much, Ben. Thanks, guys. Yeah, appreciate it.